of this ship. Such a dishonor to so loyal a steed. Do you realize how many trees have to die for us to use them as our vessel? A long ship is a hundred horses that mated with sacred fish. Gudrun and Gudmund are like the bloody elves of Asgard. You dare desecrate this scourge of the Swan Roads, this fire spouter to the bowels of England. You should lick these benches, caress the masthead, Thank the sails, make offerings to the hull. This is our home upon the waves. Hail to our river king, wave walker and loyal serpent. Think I have said enough? Let it never happen again. I knew a crazed man about my age called Rokur. We had taken to calling Rokur the rodent for his habit of collecting axes. For 20 years, he collected axes of all make and size. He had never seen a day of battle, but he swore to Thor that he would. In his 31st year, after drinking too much ale, Rokur seduced another man's wife. That man called a Holmgang against Rokur. Rokur accepted the Holmgang, and on the agreed-upon day, he laid out 12 of his axes and asked, Which of these will I use to slay you? Will it be Bone Splitter? He said. My bearded blade inscribed with sather runes, affixed to a handle of English oak? Or blood fountain, he continued. My Danax, which swings through the air on two hands with the speed of an arrow's flight. Or mighty feet twin wolf wounder, Broker growled, growing even more bold. A fierce pair of throwing axes. At that moment, the man who had challenged Roker brought a large stone down upon his head. Roker died instantly, and his axes were given away as gifts. <laughs> Master! I was saw a day in Gautland boil bear meat for his supper. Can you Let believe that? Out. He boiled it! Disgusting! We were stuck in a cave in the mountains, hiding from a snowstorm. Bear was meant for the village. We had first pickings, but saw they, local oaf, he just ripped the flank off the bear and tossed it into a pot meant for vegetables. Left it there for an afternoon. Now, if you boil anything that long, it ends up tasting like leather. Flavors. With fish, deer, horse, it does not matter. To bring out the flavors, you must prepare the meat. Not just butcher and toss it into a pot with yesterday's sludge. I have a recipe for bear. You coat it with honey and scrape it with salt before roasting over on a spit. Nothing better. When this oaf served up his boiled bear, another man, Yuck, he sliced his piece down the center and wore it for a show. Ha! You see, there are few things in life that can be both luxury and need. I prefer not to squander the meat on my spit. Did I tell you about the time I pretended to be a goat? I am no stranger to the company of others' wives. But there was one beautiful ring, married to an old blind husband. I could not resist her. So when he fell asleep, ale at him by the fire, she let me visit her most private chamber. She was a chirping songbird, but I was a braying buck, rousing the dead in my ecstasy. At the moment of glory, the old man burst in on us, waving his crop. He struck me on the arse, and I gave a yelp. Who's there? He cried. But my girl was quick of wit and knew her husband well. She convinced old blind Alvin it was not a man in a room, but his prize goat escaped from its pen. He dragged me by the hair, down on all fours to the barn, where he bolted it fast. 
I spent the night lying in straw and shit. Still, the best night of my life. <laughs> You Salskulls got a story. When I was a girl, I tied threads to my mother's cats and screamed. The cock got right through Valhalla! Why is it when we grow old, we stop telling ourselves the most fantastic stories? Why is it we stop believing we can command the gods? We abandon all the true dramas of our own creations. Our own friendly savior. For the dark savior. The political say that when we are children, we are the nobles of our little world. The rulers of moments, the glory of glee. And if I have learned anything from all of my battles, all of my wars, my days, my regrets, my victories, I always take the time to have fun. I do not apologize for it. So save your stupidest war cry for me. Bit enough, lover of strangeness. <laughs> We need an epic tale. In quiet moments like these, I often think on my life and how it will come to pass. The Nornir weave our fates. Everything we do has already been decided, even the day of our death. But these thoughts trouble me. For if the Nornir already know I am to be great, then I will be great, no matter what I do. If I cast myself overboard to drown, would fate send a dolphin to save me? Or was I always meant for a watery end? What is the point of valor, of glory? If I slay a hundred men, am I a hero? After all, the dice were loaded. Should I do nothing at all? Why make an effort when I could stand here and let my fate come to me? Or does heroism lie in not knowing one's fate? Facing your end, whatever the whims of the gods. Perhaps the true measure of a man the full span of his worth is how little he gives a shit. Sail down! Sail! Catch the wind! My mother taught me to care for oaks as if they were my own heart. There is no greater aim than to honor an oak till death when a foul king strolls into town. An oath means as much as dust. These flimsy oaths, they cost us everything. I like to take oaths in the ancient manner. Do not eat for a day, then cut a sheet of Petitur from the earth. Then wrap your sword in this oily carpet of dirt and grass, flakes from Great Emer's old court, and set it aflame. In that way, your honor burns bright. It does not dwindle as you speak the old words. Now, with nothing to your name, Nothing to gain or lose. Will you pledge your heart, your family, your raven of wine, your honor, your might, and your word to each and each? And spread sail and fire and fire, and finally the dagger. Together, draw blood from the cradle of the sword earth. Hush now. 